I'm going to talk to you today about milk fever and uh, it's a common if not one of the most common things affecting uh, down cows, metabolic disease in cattle, dairy cattle. It's to do with the huge amount of milk they make all of a sudden drawing calcium out of their blood, um, leaving them low so the muscles don't work and then the end result is that they go down. Now most of the time we don't see all these early clinical signs, what we find is the cow down in the paddock needing prompt treatment and if I had to give you one rule of thumb it would be be prepared and get prompt treatment, get into these cows early. That's why vets like us need our products on hand, ready to go, ready to treat these down cows. So the first thing you do with a down cow is sit it up on its chest so she doesn't bloat any further. I think so I should nearly be right, Brian. And as you can see, they're pretty flexible. The nose can come right around here to the hock. I like to tie them up so you've got a quick release knot here. Something you can undo if she struggles or gets in trouble. But she's pretty well exposed. She's sitting comfortably on a chest and you've got access to this jugular vein right here. So if you hold it up like this, it'll start to bulge and you can find it easily. Okay, so what I'll do now is uh, take a blood sample from her before we start any treatment. So I've got a baseline to go back to in case it's not milk fever, which is the most likely thing. And then I can go from there. So I'll take the blood from the tailbone and then I'll come back and uh, run some fluids with calcium unit into the vein now. Okay, so I write down the number, number 286. So I know exactly which cow I'm treating and which farm, farmer's name as well. And uh, just grab a sample. If I can find the vein, here we go. And there it is filling up. I've got that for later if I need it. So while she's down, most common thing is milk fever for a freshly carved cow. I'll go ahead and treat her now, then I'll finish going over the rest of the cow, make sure there's nothing else. Because like any down cow, it could be any number of reasons causing her to not be able to get up. Not just metabolic problems, but also musculoskeletal, infections, calving paralysis, things like that, okay? So when I use a milk fever bag, because it's spring and the ground's wet, quite often keep this bit to kneel on. Stops it soaking through my pants. Like I said, we've got the jugular here. You can hold it up nicely. The longer you leave your hand here on the bottom, because the blood flow is going this way, the more it distends or fills up. And I just keep it there. I find if you get your head too close, you can't see it. So I keep my head back. I keep it held up. And there it is ready to go. So I'll try and do that now. Bingo. Aim for the middle of the vein, and it's flowing back down. Some people go downhill, some people go uphill. It doesn't really matter. Okay, now what we have to do is snap off. And we've got our calcium solution ready to go. I hold on my teeth. You can hang it on a standard. Doesn't matter what works. So attach it. Push it in tight so it holds, and it's running in. That solution's running into this cow. Now, every now and then I check I lower the bag and you can see this nice stream of frank blood running in. We know we're still in the vein. And up again, and it'll just flow back in. Most cows are happily restrained like this. They won't struggle. The odd one will try and come forward at you. Be careful if you're tying her up like this on the side of the hill because they can roll over. But here we are, great access to this jugular vein, running the solution in. And I just check every now and then to make sure it's coming back. Same time, I'm watching the heart rate, because you can see it nice and rhythmically pulsing here. We know calcium can affect heart, so we keep an eye on that. This is going really well for her. Quite often, if there's a cow that's moving its head around, throwing it back and forth, I'll leave my hand resting on the neck, so as she wobbles, the needle wobbles. Otherwise, if I'm holding this out here, and she pulls back, the needle will come out of the vein and possibly go outside the, outside the vein and under the tissue. But we're still in, it's going really well. So as I'm running in this bag, the higher you hold it, the more gravity just gets the um, calcium solution to flow in. 
There's no point squeezing the bag, it runs in fine if you've got it high. I run it in over about 10 minutes or so. As you're running in the solution, you'll see the heart get stronger in its contractions, more forceful, which is what the calcium will do to the muscle of the heart. So if for some reason you have trouble with the vein on this side, you haven't quite got it in, the solution spills around the vein and makes it all thick, and then you have trouble with the needle finding that vein again, don't be afraid to pull it out, put the cow's head around the other side, restrain it again, and use the other jugular vein. There's also another site, uh, the uh, milk vein you can use. I try not to because if you damage that, that's the main vein draining from the udder, so I don't really want to mess with that, and I've seen a few abscesses around there. That's just a personal preference. If it works for you, that's fine. I'm just watching this heart right now. It's still steady and strong. Everything's going fine for this girl. So as we're getting the last parts of this bag in, helps to roll it up. You can provide a little bit of pressure to get that last bit down the tube and into the vein. It's going nice and steadily. Remember, we're getting towards the end of the bag here, so we've still got to be watching our heart rate. If they ever do have a reaction from the calcium, they're usually an irregular heart rate that you're looking for. It starts firing off at irregular beats. Here I am coming towards the end, trying to get those last bit in. Might as well be in the cow, as left in the bag. We've got the last bit now. You can see that last bit of air coming down that tube. I'm squeezing it down. And now I'll just pull out the needle and you hold off the vein so you don't get any bleeding under the skin and that's how you put calcium in.